Yo, what is up guys, and welcome to another Wild Rift video, and do I really need to say it again? I'm playing Oriana, the most broken champion, you can always pick her, she has no counter, she's so easy to play, guys, Oriana is crazy, okay? And I'm gonna explain to you guys yet again how to play her, I have quite a lot of Oriana videos, and I'm actually pretty good at Oriana, and this champion is just stupid, and honestly, the build part, I'm just gonna go through it in like 30 seconds, there's one build that you go for, Luden's Echo, Archangel Staff, Rabadon's Death Cap, Void Staff, and then the Green Book. For your runes, you go for Conqueror, not Ari. Ari is not worth it. Conqueror is still worth it, even the Vampirism. Second rune, you go for Gathering Storm. You could go for Scorch, but Scorch sucks. Just go for uh, Gathering Storm to scale into the late game. Third rune is completely situational. If you have no idea what to go for, you can get Nullifying Orb, but it's not really worth it because you already have an Archangel staff. So generally, Hunter Titan is better. Fourth rune, you go for Mana Flow Band for the mana, and then you go for Barrier and Flash. It's that simple. Just put this build up and build it every game, and it's gonna work. So let's get into the gameplay immediately. Like, as I said, wait, let me put it in the middle of the screen. One second. Go on the middle of the screen, please. Why is it not going to the middle of the screen? Ah, oh, what am I doing? Go to the middle of the screen. There we go. Like, Oriana is just... How do you, like, how do you even say it? It's... She has no counters. There is literally no counters to this champion. You can always pick her. You can first pick her, last pick her, mid pick her. You can play her in the mid lane. You can play her in the dragon lane. You just gotta play her properly. And it's not even hard to play Oriana properly. But there's one thing that I have to say. One thing that I have to say. Um, while it is not hard to get into Oriana, the skill floor, the skill floor, like the floor, you know, the, the bottom line of Oriana is very high already. Like a decent Oriana player or even a beginner Oriana player can do well into, for example, like a better Ari player. What I'm trying to say is you don't have to be amazingly good on Oriana to be useful. But if you are amazingly good, this champion becomes insanely broken. So let me tell you the difference between, you know, a normal Oriana and then the insanely good Orianas. First of all, the normal Oriana player randomly shoots his ball, the first ability, and then randomly clicks on his second ability. Like if I want to hit the Zix, for example, a normal Oriana would just kind of auto-aim the first ability or just shoot it forwards and then click on second ability like this. This is what a normal Oriana would do, like right here, and if you if you didn't notice it, you can rewind the video and see it. And what a, like this, you see that? This is what a normal Oriana constantly does. Just shoot the ball close to the enemy and hit them with the second ability. Like just do that and do some damage. But the most amazing, the best, best Oriana players, what they do is they actually make sure they hit their first ability and then they use their second ability. What that does, it actually allows you to deal like more than double the poke damage. If you're able to hit the enemy with your first ability and after that you use your second ability, you're going to do more than double the poke damage than if you just, you know, get the ball close to the enemy and uh, just hit your second ability. I know it's easy to do, right? Like I know it's so easy to just get the ball close to the enemy. Right here, I don't know what I was thinking. I wasted my flash and barrier just to pop his control ward. I mean, I have no explanation to you guys. I got baited by the ward. <laughs> I got baited by the ward. It's it, it's stupid. It's so stupid actually, because now I don't have a flash and I don't have um barrier. So for the people, that, like I remember people commenting. Um, uh, uh, man, my brain, telling me. Why don't you go for a tier of goddess before the Luden's Echo? The answer to that is because you want to get a Luden's Echo as fast as possible. With the new changes to the dragon, where it spawns at 5 minutes instead of 4 minutes, you can very easily get a Luden's Echo if you just, you know, buy it as your first item. You should be able to pretty much get it every game. Oh, you know what? The winners for the, th the three winners for the coaching session for last month, I'm going to put them in the top comment. I picked them randomly on a website, but honestly, I can't bother uploading the video showing the proof. You just got to believe me. I picked three random winners on the website and I put the names in the top comment. Let's hope I don't forget that. But yeah, if you won the coaching session, if you're the YouTube, cha YouTube, uh, YouTube channel that won the giveaway, send me a message on Discord or Twitter or whatever and say, hey, I won it. And then I'll just do a quickly, quick check to see if you actually won it. And then we're going to have the coaching session. 
I'm not sure what I'm doing for this month. If you want to put a comment under the video, you can. Maybe I'll do a giveaway. I don't know. But it supports the channel. So you guys really need to pay attention to the thing that I just told you. Like this, you see that? I just hit the second ability. And sometimes it's okay to do that. Like sometimes you won't be able to reach the enemy, right? Like sometimes I can't reach the Zix. It's okay to poke with just your second ability. But if the enemy gets close, like if they get close within your range, you should pretty much always really try to focus on actually hitting your first ability and then using your second ability. Don't just auto aim it or don't just randomly use it just to get close to the enemy. I really want you guys to actually pay a lot of attention, like if the enemy is close to you, really try to predict where they're going and try to aim your ball in a certain way that you pretty much, you know, you guarantee a hit because it really increases your damage. And the beauty of it is as well, when you do first ability, second ability and hit your ball on the enemy, you know, when you hit it, you can then also use your third ability to then hit the enemy again and give yourself a shield. So like this, boom, this, exactly this. I'm actually gonna rewind the video, wait. I'm, uh, this is exactly, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Look at how I'm gonna hit the Zix. He gets close to me, look. First ability, second ability, third ability, basic attack. The, and I took zero damage. The reason that this this combo is the perfect Orianna combo is because you're doing the maximum amount of damage. You know, you hit your first ability, you hit your second ability, and the enemy is going to be slowed because of your second ability. So you can also hit your third ability, you know, the shield when the ball goes back to you. And when you get shielded, it allows you to do another basic attack for free as well because your shield will tank, your shield will tank the damage from the enemy. So essentially, you're going to take very little damage, but you're going to you're gonna do a lot of damage to the enemy. Like that right there, that right there was literally the perfect poking combo with Orianna. Like if you can do that very often in a game, that's when you know you've truly mastered Orianna. But it's, hard, it's harder than it looks. It truly is harder than it looks. Because if you actually pay attention to a lot of Orianna gameplays, even for me, you'll see that very often I won't or like, you know, it's, it's just really hard to actually hit your second ability. Oh, I nearly stole it. It's really, really hard to like genuinely... Yeah, I missed it again there. You see that? I auto-aimed my first ability there and I didn't hit it. I only hit my second ability. Like, this is such a good game to show you guys how to play Orianna because I'm not playing a perfect Orianna. But I don't want to show you guys a perfect Orianna. I want to show you guys a, like kind of a kind of an average game. But you, you'll want to see this in the late game. Uh, right now it's average. But basically, you can clearly see how, like, I'm, I'm not doing the max damage. I'm not doing the maximum amount of damage that I could do as an Orianna. To do that, I really need to try to aim my first ability where the enemy is walking and not just shoot it close to the enemy, take the easy approach and just hit them with the second ability. Because believe it or not, your first ability actually does more damage than your second ability. Crazy, isn't it? Only in the early mid game, because... Um, you, fu you fully upgrade your first ability first, and then after that, you fully upgrade your second ability. In the late game, your second ability is actually going to do more damage, but early game, no. Early mid game, even. And that's very important to understand. Very, very, very important. It shows the importance of actually hitting your first ability as well. Ah, Wukong nearly killed Bundo. That's actually so tragic. That's so sad. It, those are the worst moments. By the way, guys, make sure you give the video a like if you're enjoying it. And, um... Yeah, please give it a like. Enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you can give it a dislike. You know, I actually look at the like and dislike ratio in a way where it's like constructive. If a video gets like, like normally my videos get like a 90, 99% like ratio, which means for every 100 likes, there is one dislike, which is a very good like ratio. I'm very happy, very grateful for that for you guys. But then sometimes there's videos that get like 95, 96%. And then I look back at those videos and it's like, Either videos where I'm like kind of toxic in the chat or like where I, I don't know, where I'm a bit tired, where my commentating is not on point. So like giving a video a dislike is not like, it doesn't hurt me or anything. It, it actually is good. Like if you don't like a video, dislike it. I want you guys to dislike videos that you don't like. Beca uh, and then also put a comment under it, letting me know why. Because I genuinely read those, genuinely look at the like ratio of the videos. So I actually know what type of content to make. Like for example... I remember, um, what was the video? I played like, uh, I actually don't remember. It was something with, a, with, a, with like a thumbnail that was an issue. I don't quite remember. But because someone told me and like the video actually had quite a lot of dislikes, that's, that's the reason why I started reading more into the comments. I actually figured out the issue and I stopped doing it. Because like, just so you guys know, you know, 
don't be afraid to dislike a video if you actually don't like it, please. Like, even if you like my channel a lot, if you like me a lot, it actually helps me. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Now, watch this video just got dumpstered with dislike. That, that would be hilarious. I'm gonna check it. I mean... <laughs> oh, God. What am I doing? How, so, let's see how I'm playing. So, I'm playing Oriana. This is a champion. Um, the way that Oriana skills is like this. So the average champion goes like this, a straight line, you know, early game, mid game, late game. This is the average. The way that Oriana works is the early game, she starts a bit lower. Throughout the mid game, she doesn't really go up much. But then when you reach those three item power spikes, she goes up and up and up and up and up. Late game, this is where it's at. So like this, this right here. Is where you kind of want to farm as much as you can like you can clearly see our team has six skills i've only participated in two of them like i'm not playing like you know ari for example who constantly wants to gank and stuff I'm just farming i'm just getting my farm up getting my items up you know getting my archangel staff getting those tier of goddess stacks that's what you want to do as an oriana no i'm not telling i'm not telling you to abandon your team you know you, rotating is okay ganking is okay but you don't you don't have to force it like, if you see a ganking opportunity, go for it, right? Oriana can gank, for sure. If your team is fighting in a jungle, help them. But, oh, that. You see that? That's right there. Yet again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replay it. This is how you poke with Oriana. It's so subtle, and it may seem like it... Oh, God, I screwed up my screen. It may seem like it doesn't really matter a lot, but I really want you guys to look at how much damage Oriana really does. Look, look, look. If you actually hit your stuff, look. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. This is mid-game Oriana, and I just took 20% of his HP. With that one little tiny eeny weeny combo. Because I was able to hit my first ability. Which then guarantees me to hit my third ability as well. Oh my god. I was a bit scared there. So really, really, really important. To really try to force yourself. To genuinely hit your first ability. Now I've really spammed it to your heads now. <laughs> Let's talk about some other stuff. Um, a thing about Oriana as well is the ultimate. Oh my god. God, this ability is crazy. A small tip for the ultimate is use your second ability before the ultimate because that allows you to slow the enemy and then you can use your ultimate. So it pretty much guarantees the hit unless they flash out of it or something. But if you just use your first ability and ultimate, they can actually walk out of it. That's how slow it is. It's really not fast. Like it takes like a whole second for your ultimate to charge up. But if you slow them, it works. Another quick little tip. You can actually use your second ability to buff the movement speed of your minions. If you want to push really fast, use your second ability on the minions. They will walk faster. They will literally walk faster and allow you to push faster. Like, it's actually pretty important to do that. Right here, this was the noob Oriana poking. You see that? Noob Oriana poking and then, oh, and then the good Oriana poking. Stole the dragon. I was blinded, but I was actually still able to hit a two-man ultimate. Here you can also see why Conqueror is so good on Oriana. It's so easy to stack because basic attack, first ability, second ability, third ability, and you've stacked it up fully pretty much. So like, it's so easy to stack up the Conqueror. It gives you so much bonus ability power and the Vampirism, which is surprisingly good. Like, it heals you up throughout the fight. It is surprisingly good, the Vampirism. Like, as an Oriana, Oriana is probably one of the easiest champions to get like a flawless game on. You know, not dying at all. You know, you have champions, champions like Zix that can do that, Oriana... Varys, these like Oriana is one of those types of champions that can do that because you can play her very safely, but then you can also play her very aggressively. Like if you're very ahead or you feel like you can just go in, Oriana can also be good if you just dive their backline. You know, use your first ability, second ability, and then ult their backline. You can pretty much get their backline to like 30% HP if you're in the mid game. In the late game, you can pretty much one shot them. It's crazy. And in the late game. In the late game, Oriana changes a bit. Because in the late game, it honestly doesn't even matter that much whether or not you hit your first ability. You just want to poke them. Like when you're when you have four or five items, it's totally worth to just get your sec just get your balls close to the enemy and put them in their faces and just do some damage with it. Now is YouTube gonna demonetize me for this one? I remember YouTube demonetized one of my videos because I said I should not say it again. Why were I I was gonna um you guys know the term slain, enemy slain. It's, it's you know, when, when a person gets old, they get slain. But the other word for it that starts with a K. I said that I just slained a mosquito, but then with the other word. And I told YouTube, like, did you guys actually manually review this video? They were like, yeah, we, and we just reviewed it again. And this is not with our guidelines. We don't want you to slain mosquitoes. 
no comment. Okay, no comment. I lost a lot of, I, I lost pretty much all of the revenue of that video because of the stupid mosquito. So not only did the mosquito annoy me, the mosquito also just literally made, like, it, it just demonetized the whole video on my YouTube channel. <laughs> stupid mosquitoes, but I mean, everyone hates mosquitoes. Everyone hates mosquitoes. God. The fact that, that, that the mosquito even went that far, like, that mosquito had personal hate against me. I also remember when I Malphite ulted like a massive spider. I remember that. I put that in one of my videos as well. But that video didn't get demonetized. It's just because I said the word, I think. You're just not... Uh, but I say that word a lot. Whatever. So whatever. I sometimes talk about random stuff in my videos. Let's see how I fight here. Boom, boom. Good. Good one. You see that? The ball itself does 300 damage. And then even a champion like a Mundo, who's, who is a frontliner, you'll shred through them. And Orianna actually has a very easy way of getting through frontlines, you know, like a Nasus, Mundo, Garen, whatever. Because these are champions that are up your face. So you can very easily hit your ball on them. The champions that Orianna can struggle against is, for example, Lucian. Because Lucian can actually dodge your balls, and it's going to be really hard for you to hit it on a Lucian. But like, oh, But Ziggs, for example, I would actually say... Oriana counters Zix because um, you have the shield and you can you can you out damage him. He does out range you, sure, but you out damage him. If you get close to him and trade with him, you will do more damage than him. Uh, yeah, you will do more damage to him than he will do to you, and that's that's honestly because of the shield. Like your shield allows you to tank up just a tad bit more damage, which allows you to trade very very easily. And when you get your Sarf's embrace finished, uh, Sarf's embrace finished, by the way. You should be fine against assassins as well, like uh, Evelyn, for example, because you, we all know how Evelyn can one-shot champions. She can't one-shot Orianna because if you have the Seraph's Embrace, it gives you a shield. Then you can use your third ability, which is another shield. Then you can use your barrier, which is another shield. You'll probably have like one second to do all of this because Evelyn will still one-shot you if you don't. But like one second is more than enough to react to like an Evelyn going on you. So even assassins like a Zed, for example, don't counter Orianna because in the late game, they can't do anything against you. You just properly use your abilities. Look at this. He cannot do anything against me. I'm just hitting my balls on him and I'm dealing so much damage while he's not even getting close to me. He's literally not even getting close to me. This was a noob Orianna poke. You see that? That was the noob Orianna. That was the pro Orianna poking. More pro Orianna poking right here. There we go. You see that pro Orianna poking gives you kills. Come on, pro Orianna. Boom, boom. And when your ball is close to the enemy, you can actually um, um, auto-aim your first ability. So, like, when your ball is close to the enemy, just auto-aim it. Because it's always going to hit if it's really close to the enemy. Don't bother aiming it. Because auto-aiming makes, um, uh, makes it faster. You know, it makes it faster. It's instant if you auto-aim it. Right when your first ability goes off cooldown, you can instantly auto-aim it to an enemy. But only do this if your ball is very, very close. Only do it if the ball is very close. Because you don't want to risk missing it out. Look at that! This is what I mean. In the late game, you, you don't even care about actually hitting your first ability. My second ability alone just did 50% of Zix's, Zix's HP. What the hell? That's crazy. Did you see that? Did, did, did you see that? The damage? I didn't even do anything. I just shot my balls in his face. And that's it. That's what dealt all the damage. This champion is just crazy. You get to the late game. It's just unbelievably crazy. I mean, why does that do so much damage? How is that not broken? I always put Orianna in the S plus tier. Always. She hasn't been out of the S plus tier since, since the very first season, I think. I mean, maybe I put, I sometimes put her like top S tier. Look at this, by the way. And again, you can use your second ability to, to make the way faster, to push just a bit faster, which is really, really good. I haven't died yet in this game, by the way. Look at that damage, man. Just, I blindly killed the Graves, by the way. I, I, I it was kind of obvious that he would go there. Malphite could have ulted me within the Zix ult. I would probably not die, but that would have been his best chance to kill me. That would have been a good ultimate if Malphite had done that. Yeah, we're just finishing the game. And we won. Seven kills. Oh my god. Eight kills, zero deaths. Perfect game. Let's see how much damage I actually did. Because this was just easy. Like, easy game. 
Oriana is just stupid. I hate this chat. I like playing Oriana, but I hate how easy and just always... She's always way too strong. I don't get it. I don't... She kind of needs to get changed, in my opinion. They need to make her a bit harder to play, to be honest. Just look at this. I did 33.7 thousand damage. It was a very, very easy game. And, yeah. Thank you guys very much for watching. Oh, I have... Do I have red eyes? No, I don't. I'm fine. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next Valdrift video. Bye-bye.